It is Friday, August 26th, 2022. I am Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, which means we are ridding ourselves of complex themes, and we are dedicating the next, I don't know, 20 to 40 minutes, I suppose, on pure crossword puzzle solving. I just realized it was very silly to start a sentence that required me to predict a time that it would take me to solve this video. I have to solve this crossword. I have absolutely no idea how long it will take me. But this this uh, indefinite episode of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for bringing us this uh, series, helping sustain it and making it a an ongoing part of my daily work. I do very much appreciate that. And other things I appreciate are people who keep telling me that they're hearing the sort of cellular interference from my phone that is being picked up on the mic. I can't unfortunately put the um, the phone very far away from the microphone because it uh, because I can't. Um, I, I have to use it during the during the end of the solve for the uh, bit, of, well, at the beginning and the end of the solve for benefactor names and for clues from yesterday's puzzle. Um, but I did disable the mo- I did disable mobile data just now. I'm hoping that works. I'm very sorry if you still hear uh, the interaction. Let me know if you do. I'm not really sure what to do about this. It never seemed to be an issue until, I don't know, maybe the last week. So I don't know what's changed, but let me know if this video seems okay. And if not, I will have to try harder. Anyway, uh, interrupted my bit about the Patreon campaign. Uh, if you do back that, like the people mentioned who are benefactors and therefore also get the official Daily Solve mug, um, if you back it at any level, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date and the new ones that go up each week. You can find all of that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And today I'll be doing the a uh, weekly uh, Friday speed solve of mini puzzles and probably something else as well. Uh, I need to decide what I'm going to solve this week. Anyway, uh, thank you also if you subscribe to the channel. We are creeping towards 10,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. We're just a few hundred away from that. And uh, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server as well in the link in the description field underneath the video. All right, so now let's get on to the puzzle. This is a Friday puzzle. It was constructed by Robert Robert Logan in his New York Times crossword debut, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, just as it was even yesterday, when I apparently neglected to credit Will Shorts for his uh, eternal involvement. Uh, It was edited by him that day and today and tomorrow. Ready to start solving? Let's get going. Team leader. Not sure. Alpha dog or something? I don't think that's right at all. It just happens to be the correct number of uh, letters. I don't think it's right. Uh, 80 of Saturday Night Live. Absolutely no clue. Yeah, I'm breaking up with you. It's over? No. We're done? Oops. I don't know. This is this is going to be one of those crosswords where we have things that, or a few things could probably fit. Um, and that's common on... Uh, themeless puzzles. You tend to have vaguer, more wide open cluing, uh, which makes the puzzle more difficult. Kind of bored at the beach. A surfboard or a boogie board, maybe? A boogie board, the kind of shorter kind that you sort of body surf on? Some shot. And Joey, who doesn't wear pants. Oh, a roo? A Joey is a, um, a young kangaroo, right? So that that might be it. Um, journalist's secret. A hot tip, maybe? No idea if that's right. This doesn't... Some shot. I don't know. I'm not really certain about either of these, but let's just keep looking. Prepare for everything, maybe. Not sure. Bull rush, e.g. That's a reed, I think. You could find in a, a boggy area or a swamp or something. Can we talk tersely? Uh, Maybe it's not. Is that something else? I don't know. Can we talk tersely? Could be see me. Retirement spots. Spas, maybe? I don't know. 
know about that. Bank regulator. There's something called FINRA. Is that a bank regulator? Or I don't know. This is this is a tough one so far, I am finding. Show vanity in a way. I mean, again, this could be so many things. It could be preen or boast or I mean, I think there are probably a number of possibilities. Accomplishes the impossible with cats. Okay, this I'm relatively certain of. It's uh, herding cats. Herding ca the, the idiom herding cats exists specifically to indicate that the thing you're trying is basically impossible. It's too unwieldy to be achieved. Okay, so maybe a bull rush is a read. And then team leader. Hmm, that's funny. That alpha actually could fit there. Big initials in payroll services. Um, NCR maybe or AC. I don't know. Let's keep looking. Zoom call background effect a blur. Zoom, Zoom uh, the video conferencing software lets you blur your background. Surround sound pioneer, probably Dolby, which is a major audio uh, sort of technology company. Team leader. Boy, it actually kind of does look like Alpha Dog. That's so funny. I, I didn't really think that was going to be the answer. And it still may not be, but it's looking more likely. Ready. And they make up families. Genuses. So in uh, tax in taxonomy, the taxonomy of um, life. I suppose, organisms. Um, I never remember the full order that goes all the way from kingdom down to species, but um, genuses must be below families. So there we go. Yeah, I'm breaking up with you. Well, maybe, maybe it is we're done. Did I try that one before? I can't remember. I, th I thought I did, and it didn't look right for some reason. Can we talk tersely? Oh, a word. There we go. Okay, this is coming together. Bank regulator. Oh, a, a, a bank in the in the sort of almost geographical sense. So a levy, you have uh, a levy set up to prevent um, overflowing at a at a at, at a bank of a of a river, for instance. There we go. So prepare for everything. Maybe is to over plan and to show vanity in a way is preen. Okay, it was one of my guesses. And then retirement spots are den. So you could you could say I'm retiring to the den, retiring to my sort of, I don't know, relaxation room, I guess. Absolutely looks like it starts with yes for sure, maybe. Ready is on alert. There we go. On alert, ready. And light into ray into hmm. light into. Not sure I see that one. What about this? Absolutely, yes, looks correct. Check in is. I don't know why I don't see that. Let's keep looking. I'm glad to have made some progress. Coveted magic item in Sondheim's Into the Woods. I've actually never seen Into the Woods, so I don't know what this is. Magic wand, maybe? I don't know. It's probably something less obvious than that. Minute or minute? If it if this were minute, it could be something like teeny or even in a slangier way, something like Insi, but but I don't know. It could also be minute as in a unit of time, but it doesn't don't see what that would be in this case. Um journalist's secret. All right. I'll just keep just keep going. Really tiny machines, nanobots maybe, nanotechnology dealing with extremely tiny, tiny, tiny little robots. Big employer of U.S. mathematicians in brief. Oh, the National Security Agency, maybe? Um, for cryptographic purposes? That could be the case. Something that may be toted on a tour. Um, not sure. Is it a, does this mean a tour of a, a music artist, maybe? Or a military tour? Deployment? An arm? Take your weapon with you? I don't know about that. A heavy one may want a lighter. A heavy smoker may 
want and regularly carry a lighter. Oh, so an amp, right? So it, it is a music artist touring and have an amplifier uh, being toted around by roadies or whoever. Okay, so blank at all, not at all. And yep, that's fine. Okay, it could be okay by me or something like that. What about this? Calculus A, B, or physics C, E, G. Um, these are presumably AP tests, advanced placement tests in the U.S. secondary school system. Um, this would be, uh, bear in mind, even though there are two, two examples here, and I said AP tests when I said it aloud, the clue is only referring to either one of them. It's calculus AB or physics C, either one of which is an AP test. So just watch out when you see that or in a clue. It maybe looks like the answer will be plural, but it, but it isn't. Okay, get drunk formally is besought. If you're besotted, you're drunk. I think that works. Straight prefix could be ortho, uh, as a, from which we get a variety of words such as orthogonal. If things are in an orthogonal relationship, they're sort of in a straight uh, connection. Okay, yep, that's fine. Okay, so we have this we have the shortened, we have the abbreviated form of okay here. Okay. Um oh, maybe it's no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's okie dokie. And that's why we have yep in there. That's indicating something uh, a bit slangy. Yep, that's fine. Okie dokie. Those are they have a similar vibe. Okay, bottle of rum go with yo ho ho and a bottle of rum goes the pirate song. Uh, yo, yo, pirate's life for me. Is that, is that, no. Is that where this comes from? Yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of rum. Or does that predate that song? I think it probably predates it. Because that song was written for Pirates of the Caribbean, the Disney um, ride at Disneyland. And I think you'll own a bottle of rum predates that, but I don't know. Anyway, let's keep looking. Extra periods for short. And, and that might not even be a line in the song now that I think about it. Anyway, extra periods for short are overtimes. And Scottish sheepdog informally is a... Uh, don't know, maybe I'll see it when I get there and I get more crosses. Here we have, I can't say for sure, hard, hard to tell, hard to tell what some of these answers will be, especially in this northeast corner up here. Cozy is what? Popped up is a rose, maybe? Literally popped up at a rose. Signs a 48 down. What's 48 down? C47 down, okay. Uh, let's, let's look around first. Snack item since 1912. Here we go, it must be Oreo, the uh, favored confection of the New York Times crossword. Uh, and here, so people have pointed out, even though I've said in the past, I think the convention is when Oreo is used, um, crossword constructors should use a clue that has never yet been used because Oreo itself has been so frequently deployed in the crossword. That may not end up, that may not be strictly true, but I don't think I've seen this one before, but maybe it's come up. It's not item since 1912. I'm not sure. Anyway, I certainly didn't know that that was true of Oreos, but there's little doubt that that's the answer in the New York Times crossword. So, oh, cozy could be homey, maybe? Something is, is homey and it feels comfortable to you. Davy Jones was one. Davy Jones was a musician, a member of the band The Monkees, uh, spelled in this manner, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so signs of 48 down. Oh, rents? You sign a lease, probably. There we go. Okay, it's a good... Um, follow up to our theme the other day with those those flowery bits of real estate listing language. Anti-discrimination initials. Uh, equal employment opportunity or equal opportunity employment. <laughs> I can never remember which of those it is. Uh, let's let's look at the acrosses. Regard. Oh. Oh, okie dokie must be spelled differently. So I guess it's spelled in each case, in each each of the two words ends with an EY rather than the second, as I suspected with an IE. So uh, to regard, so you say, I hold you in high regard. I hold you in high esteem. That's what this is looking for. So anti-discrimination initials are equal employment opportunity. There we go. 
and uh, that's a that's a U.S. specific bit of of legal language. And then who me rejoinder? You could say who me? Yes, you. And a layer of green eggs is an emu. So there we go. Or an emu? Ah, if someone told me. No, I can't. Remember. Uh, as someone pointed out, you sort of need to encounter some some piece of knowledge several times uh, in in order to really commit it to memory. It's very difficult to be told something once and then permanently remember it, unless it's something you actually find interesting or important, obviously, that, that's different. But if it's just sort of arbitrary trivia, I think it's it's tough to just sort of hear it in passing and then have it committed to memory permanently. Okay, fruit-bearing shrub known botanically as Prunus spinosa. I'm guessing this is slow, the best known as I've weirdly had cause to mention several times in the last week, I think, best known for its incorporation in slow gin. But uh, yeah, that's come up a few times recently. I don't remember this coming up as often years ago. It feels like it's becoming a very common bit of crosswordies, but I, I could be misremembering the history. Okay. Oh, oh, a Scottish sheepdog. Is it a Sheltie? That that sounds that's that sounds familiar now that I actually um, see it. It could still be wrong, but that does sound familiar to me. Showbiz sappiness, schmaltz maybe. So that's a that's a Yiddish term. So schmaltz, in a literal sense, refers to chicken fat, rendered chicken fat, but uh, metaphorically has become associated with. Um, a surfeit of emotion with, with, as the clue says, sappiness in film and television with screen, screen entertainment, or I guess not just screen entertainment, it could be drunk, it could be a musical or a drama, it could be some sort of uh, live dramatic work as well, but um, overly self-serious, almost sort of po-faced emotion. Okay, small screen milestone of the 1950s. Um, oh, color TV. There we go. That makes sense. And then portrayer of the lawyer Robert Shapiro in The People vs. O.J. Simpson. I heard this was good, but I never actually, I never actually saw it. I'm not sure who that is, who the actor who portrayed Shapiro is. You're on. It's a date or it's a deal. Could be either one of those. I think realistically. Well, either either one of them starts with a D. Uh, a 50-50 chance. So here we go. Or it, oh, oh, look at this. It's a, it's a themeless puzzle with arguably a bit of a theme. A 50-50 chance, which looks like even toss or something, or a description of the lengths of this puzzle's across and down answers, respectively. Oh. Even odds. Oh, wow. So the crosses are all of even length and the downs are all of odd length. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very clever. So that's, that's a fun way to get a kind of a clever idea into a puzzle because on a the it makes sense that you do this on a themeless day because I don't really think this would qualify as a theme in the sense that it doesn't really, there's no subject matter that's, being addressed, you know, there's no thematic material that's being addressed throughout the puzzle in answers to clues, but there is actually a property that ties together the entire grid. And so, yeah, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd get this by on a, on a, uh, this device on a Sunday to Thursday puzzle. It'd probably be considered in, in, um, insufficient for a theme, but it's, it's just a fun bit of construction that somebody thought about that uh, Robert Logan hit upon and thought, sure, why couldn't you construct a puzzle this way? And then cheekily pointed out at the end. That's very nice. I like that. Okay, let's finish it off. Movie Movers Need, maybe, is a van, perhaps, a moving van. Uh, ring bearer of note. Oh, this would be from The Lord of the Rings, the character Frodo, the Hobbit. And then gift tag word could be from, straightforwardly enough. Food you might eat in a bed. Food you might eat in a bed. What is that implying? I'm not sure. All blank up, irritated, all riled up, maybe? Ate some is an octad. And bored, so to speak. Could be um, 
bored, a few different meanings of bored. It could be bored as a verb to, to get on a train or an airplane or a boat or something, or it could be bored as in a physical piece of wood, or it could be bored as in a committee, or it could be bored as in room and board, so lodging. Why don't I see? I mean, you could go on. I don't know why I can't see what this is. Oh, John Travolta must have been in that. I had no idea. Okay. And then you're on. It's a deal. Looks right. Okay. So, uh, right. So it's room. Sorry. It's room and board. It's not lodging. It's the other one. And if I would have thought of that, maybe I would have jumped to it earlier. Room and board. So lodging and meals. Board is, of course, the meals, not the lodging. And then food you might eat in a bed. Oh, a bed of rice. I see. That's 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 what was going on with the intentional... Uh, phrasing in a bed because the rice you could have a bed of rice on to, on top of which other food has been placed. Okay, something you might strike. You might strike oil in the ground. Old telecom initials. I'm not sure. Cheney of politics. Liz Cheney is an American politician. So there we go. Explosive feedback. And largest of the society islands. Is Tahiti. The Society Islands include Tahiti. Um, zero degrees would be north on a compass. And free movie starring yourself. A dream? Is that... <laughs> I'm not really sure. Does this mean sort of... A dr- is this metaphorically thinking of a dream as a movie? I'm not really sure. If that's what that is. Oh, that's funny. It actually fits the crosses I was thinking about. Explosive feedback. Yeah, because that could be recoil. So if you're firing a weapon, I guess. I mean, it's sort of firing a weapon, I guess, is a bunch of little explosions. So they create feedback. Recoil. Old telecom initials. ITT? Does that, is that something if this is Tahiti? I think this is Tahiti. So I'm just going to assume that that's right. ITT. That sort of looks plausible. Absolutely. You betcha. There we go. Okay, I'm not surprised I didn't jump straight to that earlier. Uh, check in is... What? This does look like dream, doesn't it? That's funny. Absolutely. Yes. And... Light into... Oh, check in, report. You could check in on somebody. Report on them, maybe? Light into. Oh, rip into? You light into someone? You rip into them? Uh, Yeah, I guess that works. And then absolutely, yes, indeedy, maybe. So that's that's a bit of an echo there of our okie-dokie. And coveted magic item. Okay, it's not a wand. I'm not surprised it isn't a wand but I'm not sure what it is. Match is agree. Maybe arguments agree. They match. Common kind of battery. Oh, that's funny. Let's just select that at one point. Um, Common kind of battery would be NICAD battery? Nickel. Is that nickel cadmium, I think? NICAD battery. There we go. And then minute. Okay, maybe. I, I think it still is minute. It could be teeny. We have this Y there now that makes it look more likely. Ah, so a coveted magic item and sometimes enter the woods. Magic bean. So that must be um, drawing from the Jack and the Giant, Jack and the Beanstalk um, fairy tale. I think I think Into the Woods is a sort of pastiche of sort of a somewhat tongue-in-cheek collage of various fairy tales. I, I've, I've never seen it. I know people think it's very good. I should probably watch a production of it at some point. Anyway minute does look like teeny and journalist secret ah a source of course they keep their source secret that that's much better than what i was thinking which was an individual tip some shot oh bb's ammunition for a bb gun there we go and then which probably wouldn't produce much recoil and then 80 bryant must be the answer not familiar but that's fine and there we go all right a nice friday puzzle this was uh i think this is kind of what i how I sort of like a Friday puzzle to work or, or Friday or Saturday, generally a theme, one of the themeless puzzles is it's, it's open enough that I find it very difficult to commit to anything initially, but then eventually something becomes unambiguous. What was it in my case? I can't re- Oh, it was herds. I think actually it was accomplishes the impossible with cats. 
was herds, which which I thought was was good. And and then from there, you can start disambiguating some of the different possibilities that that you were considering throughout the solve. And then it all sort of comes together. And I, I really enjoy that that feeling of moving from uncertainty and sort of <laughs> questioning and speculation and then being able to say, okay, good, I thought of this. This one wasn't the answer. This one was. It all sort of came together. And then we had this fun little surprise at the end. I, of course, never, 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 never would have noticed this property of this grid on my own. I'm curious if anyone would have. It would be very unlikely, I would think. Uh, so it was just a funny little thing. At the very, very end of the grid, we are informed that there just is this arbitrary property to which the grid adheres. And that's that. It's not quite a theme, but it's it's almost a theme. It's sort of a pseudo theme. So well done to Robert Logan on his debut. I think that's a nice, uh, very nice introduction to this constructor. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I don't think there was much that I needed. Uh, well, <laughs> Tuan, Tuan Kang pointed out this puzzle was edited as always by Will Shorts. So thank you for pointing out that I apparently missed that yesterday. I didn't even realize I'd missed it. Uh, and then George Steele points out the origin of ORD. O-R-D is the airport code for Chicago O'Hare International Airport. And um, George reminded me that the original name of the airport was Orchard Field. It was Orchard Place, and they built an airfield there, and then it was Orchard Field. And then they eventually renamed it after the Second World War to Edward Butch O'Hare, the U.S. Navy's first Medal of Honor recipient during that war. Uh, and as a result, actually, it's one of the few airport codes that has absolutely no connection to its place or its, to, well, to either the, the city it serves or to its name or to the particular area where it happens to be located, which isn't always the actual city after which it's named. So, it has what appears to be a completely arbitrary <laughs> code. They didn't change it when they renamed the airport. And then uh, Matthias uh, Vitor, Vitor S. points out a small observation from a Brazilian viewer. The tilde in uh, Maracana, which was M-A-R-A-C-A-N-A, -A -A, has a tilde over the A. And uh, he points out it, it goes over the A, not the N. The N with the tilde does not occur in Portuguese. I believe N-H is the equivalent here. So that was my mistake. I pronounced it Maracanha because I assumed that's what the tilde was doing. Nope, I was wrong. So uh, Matthias says, the name of the stadium is pronounced kind of like Maracana in Portuguese, at least. So with an emphasis on that last syllable. So I'm sorry about that. That was a, a good observation that that I sort of, I remember reading it at the time and thinking, that's interesting that I, I remember specifically thinking it was interesting that the tilde was not over the N, that it was over the A, but maybe it just works that way anyway. I was wrong. So thank you for that. And that's all I had on the clues from yesterday's puzzle, which means we've brought today's video to an end. I'll be back tomorrow for a Saturday puzzle, which could be, uh, well, it will be another themeless puzzle, and it could be even trickier than this one, which wasn't too bad for Friday, I thought, after that initial that initial bout of doubt, doubt bout. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle. I hope you join me. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Thank you.